At this point, I'd love to introduce our next speaker, really excited to introduce Christina Satopoulos, and I'm hoping I said that name right, uh, Christina. Uh, Christina is currently working as an analytical consultant at Google, helping clients get the most out of their data. And she's helping them understand their consumers and find market opportunities. She also lectures in analytics topics across top business schools. She has traveled to 55 countries and counting. That's probably 50 more countries than me. And she's known for her hashtag book a week challenge. Definitely check that out. It's hosted on LinkedIn as well, where she encourages others to put down their phones. Don't put down your phone right now if you're tuning in on your phone. But uh, she basically encourages people to read books. She has been reading a book a week for years and hopes to inspire others to pick up the same habit. All right. At this point, I'd love to bring Christina up on our virtual stage. Hello, Christina. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really looking forward to hearing all about how SQL or SQL or Squirrel or whatever we're calling it these days is not going anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and pass over the, the virtual stage and get out of your way. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kate, uh, for kicking us off. And as well, thank you to Cassie and Scott. And for all of the attendees today, I'm really happy to see you taking advantage to stay connected from wherever you are to participate in events like this for, for virtual networking and continuous learning. So as Kate mentioned, I am dedicated to the world of data, which is why I will be speaking on a very special data topic today why SQL isn't going anywhere. Um, since we have a lot of attendees, I want to take advantage and ask the golden question. Do you pronounce it SQL or SQL? Or, or maybe you call it squirrel. Um, share in the chat what you think it is by typing simply SQL or S-E-Q-U-E-L. There, there's a very strong split in the field on the proper pronunciation, and this is a never-ending debate. I actually started running a survey yesterday on LinkedIn, and so far, with over a thousand respondents, we have 40% saying SQL, 55% uh, saying SQL, and another 5% with Squirrel. Um, so go ahead, and you can go ahead and share my screen, Kate. And as you all share your answers in the chat, I'll get started on my talk. So I'll personally be referencing it as SQL throughout, although I'm very tempted to call it Squirrel. Uh, Kate dared me to do that today, and, and it's tempting to be honest. Um, but my relationship with SQL, so I use it or forms of it on a daily basis. So for example, if I'm using something like BigQuery, then I can query data using the SQL language. Um, and I often use it in internal systems that use their own variants of SQL. And I'm personally a very big fan of it. Um, I, I love you know, working with it to automate reports, to manipulate data, to perform uh, calculations. So before I get into my talk, let's take a, a quick step back and let's understand what it is. Let's bring everyone up to speed. So what is SQL? It stands for Structured Query Language, and it's used to define and manipulate data in relational databases. So relational databases, they store data in tables with a format, with structures and relationships that are predefined. So it's for very structured data. And in simple terms, you can just think of SQL as the programming language for databases used by database administrators and analysts and so on. Um, and when people ask me for advice, uh, when they're developing their career in the data world, this is actually the number one language that I say they must know. It's great for you to learn Python, R, SAS, Java, and so on, but I believe SQL is a must. It has been, and it will continue to be so. But in comes in no SQL. This is almost like the non-identical twin brother of SQL. It stands for not only structured query language, and it allows you to store and retrieve unstructured data from non-relational databases. And non-relational databases, um, this, mean that, this means that the data is not stored in a simple table. This is data that can be stored in things like documents, for example, or JSON files, or in a graph or network format, like you could imagine for social media data, for example. Um, and these types of databases, they are not so structured, but the benefit in that sense is that they leave a lot of room for flexibility. It's great for very large, complex, diverse, unstructured data. Uh, but there's this common misconception, though, that it's here to replace SQL. And I can tell you that it's not here as a replacement. It's rather an alternative option to solve very different requirements. 
But what do the stats say? So I'm clearly a numbers person. I love data. Let's let the numbers speak for themselves. As of this year, SQL is 46 years old. So it's almost half a decade alive and it still dominates the field. And even with the emergence of no SQL, SQL still holds more than 60% of the market today in usage. As well, a recent analysis of job descriptions um, by the employment search engine Indeed, they found that 36% of job ads with data mentioned look for SQL as a key skill. And it was the number one, the top skill listed, um, beating out Python at 26%, and R with 18%. And then finally, if we focus on only entry level jobs, um, so this would be more data analyst roles, 56% of job ads required SQL as a key skill. And it heavily beat out Python, which came out with 17%, and then R with 18%. So there's, there's no denying it. SQL still dominates by far in the data world. And although the popularity of no SQL options continue to rise, SQL growth continues to accelerate as well. So why, why is SQL being challenged? It's true that no SQL has come into the scene stronger than ever. It gives organization an effective option to work with unstructured data. And it's true that the majority of data around us today is quite unstructured. So, Think of video, audio, image files, sensor data, even social media posts. But in the end, no SQL is the wrong tool for many of our modern day applications. Um, it hasn't fully lived up to its hype, while SQL and its databases in parallel have, have improved in capabilities. So if you ask any analyst, data scientist that works in the field, I can guarantee you that they will say one of their most used langu languages is SQL, right next to Python and R. It is just as important, if not more and more. And it's impressive how, how far the select statement alone can get you. But let's get to the nitty gritty of today, why we still use SQL and why it's here to stay. So first of all, um, it's simple. Uh, it's very simple, it's user friendly. It's easy for anyone to learn. I've personally known people in non-technical roles, so managers and marketers who have learned basic SQL to support in their role. Um, it's also mature and it's stable. So like I said, it's been around since the 1970s. So it's had plenty of time to get solidly battle tested. And the databases themselves are robust. And SQL is a query language, it, it is too. It's reliable and, and that's what companies need. Next is community. So going along with the fact that it's been around so long, SQL has developed, a, it, it's gathered a very large active community. So I'm talking about users, documentation, developers, and, and businesses naturally gravitate towards this and the trust, this trust that's, that's associated with it. Um, as well, we've got omnipresence. So SQL is literally found everywhere and it can, it can be used with a variety of different databases. There's lots on the market. So many people, um, many people are, are familiar with them. Many people are qualified to use them. And this vast range of users and developers, it's almost like a feedback loop. It continues to grow and feed upon itself and it's integrated into new and old technologies. Um, there are also very popular open source options now. So you've got MySQL and PostgreSQL, making it more and more widely available for all. And although SQL between vendors or operators isn't completely interchangeable, the syntax doesn't vary so much. So with, with simple modifications, you can reuse it or migrate queries. And finally is consistency. So it hasn't changed much since its conception. Um, it's very effective, it's very efficient. Why change something that isn't broken? Now, with 10 minutes, there is no way I could go into coding today. So if you want to learn about the SQL language, you have two people here you can follow on LinkedIn um, for great content. You have David Langer, he hosts Dave on Data, an online analytics training website, as well as a YouTube channel. So you can get a lot um, out of him. He is a firm believer in pronouncing it as SQL. So we are, we are enemies in that department. And then as well, you have Eric Weber, who also posts daily on SQL. 
Um, so note those down. And Kate, you can stop sharing my screen if you want, and I will just close up. So personally, I'm, I'm a huge SQL fan. Um, I, I love it. It's like a problem solving game for me. And I, I find it very intuitive and it's open for anyone to learn it. And it's a great language to get started on. It's great uh, as a beginner language. Um, and keep in mind that every company out there has some sort of SQL database. It po powers almost every website and map and, and app that's out there. So you're, if you learn it, your skills are very far reaching. Um, so to wrap up, like I said, SQL is here to stay. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, it's a core skill. So long live SQL or, or squirrel, as we want to say. And thank you very much for tuning in today. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was amazing, Christina. You have a lot of great comments and questions coming in. A lot of votes on SQL, so not SQL, but SQL, and definitely have a couple of squirrels that came in just to, just to be funny. But uh, a question for you here from Priscilla. She's asking, where can I practice SQL if my actual job doesn't allow me to practice it? Oh, that's a good that's a good question. So what I would recommend is checking out. Like I said, I'm a big reader, so I always go back to books. Look mm -hmm. at look at what books are out there. Um, there's one that's called SQL in 10 minutes a day. Um, and a lot of times the books come with recommendations on where you can practice because it's obvious you can't practice code in a book. So what I would recommend is checking out what books are on the market. And I always like having one physically to read, um, yeah. see what it recommends, and then you know use it to practice on your computer. Okay, awesome. Yeah, a lot of other uh, similar questions just coming in about where can people practice. Like, I think they see the value. Um, a lot of People were surprised at some of the statistics you shared in, 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 a, good, in a good way. And uh, yeah, SQL is old like gold. Um, I have a, a personal question for you here. So should each data scientist know SQL? Like should every data scientist know SQL? I think so. I mean, I don't think there's an excuse for you not to. It's also, like I said, a very intuitive language. Mm -hmm. So there's no excuse not to, especially if you can learn something more complex like Python, R, Java, whatever it is. Um, you can easily learn SQL. And in my experience, at least, I, I studied my master's in big data. Um, and we, of course, covered SQL very heavily just because it's so important. So most data scientists will be exposed to it. And if they are not, I would highly recommend um, taking the time to learn it then. Okay, awesome. And then uh, Mark Eric, Eric LaRogue, he's actually from Prodago. Uh, he says, what is great about SQL is that it's so universal and supported by almost every database. You can't lose by learning this. SQL all the way. There's another way. C -C SQL. <laughs> awesome. Thank, thank you, Mark. Well, Christina, I, I want to thank you so much for your time. This was a, a great talk. Thank you for packing it all into 10 minutes. And guys, follow Christina on LinkedIn, her hashtag book a week challenge. I always love all the books that you're reading. I've read a couple of them. I don't currently read a book a week, but maybe after the conference, I'll have a bit there. more time. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you so again. Much, Kate.